Welcome to the Growth Lottery series. The following guys featured hit said Growth Lottery and for one reason or another haven't taken it as far as their insane physical blessings suggested they would. What is the Growth Lottery? Well, basketball, unlike any other sport, is played at a level higher than most people can stand and reach without jumping. 10 feet to be exact. Therefore, the closer you are to reaching that height, the better chance you have to making the NBA. Whether you're blessed with height and or reach, or you're super athletic and can get to the same height as a player taller than yourself, you're now in position to fast track yourself to millions of dollars and peak social hierarchy. You hit the growth lottery. Few are born in this club and in this new series, we'll strictly be talking about them. Episode 3, Javante Green, born July 23rd, 1993. Not all growth lottery stories play out in a prospect faltering somewhere in his career and not doing what was expected of him. Sometimes you have a player like Green who takes advantage of their special talent and take it further than anyone ever thought. Today's feature may be one of the coldest dunkers I've ever seen. His highlight tapes are what highlight tapes are supposed to look like when blessed like he is. Let's talk about a few reasons I actually think Javante Green hit a spurt in his career. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth. Ash, get him. Javante is from Petersburg, Virginia. He's six foot four, 205 pounds, and hit the growth lottery in strength and insane leaping ability. He averaged 18.6 points, 5.8 rebounds, 2.3 assists, and 3.1 steals a game, and led his high school to a Division III state championship as a senior. He was the co-player of the year, but was still unranked leaving high school with one scholarship offer from Radford University. A football guy growing up, Javante trained and brought those same skills of strength and toughness to every level he played at. A player with his background is expected to maybe take his talents to Division I and luckily get an opportunity to take those talents overseas after college. Javante took it all the way to the league, where for the right team, he may carve out a pretty special career. If I'm looking for a guy that makes my team tougher, has a high motor, plays defense, and has great deflection and defensive awareness, along with being able to punish the rim off either one or two feet, I'm taking, keeping, and nurturing his talent. I have guys hit me up sometimes about advice when choosing a program or pro team to go to, and to that, I say look no further than this guy. You can't have a better example. Unranked, went to a low major school, wasn't an obvious star there, dominated in his small professional roles, and capitalized on his NBA opportunity. Spurt number one, he persevered. Being an unranked prospect leaving high school means two things in particular. You haven't put in the hours needed to be, and you have a unique opportunity to be a great example to the ones coming after you. Don't take that the wrong way. Yes, you may work hard, but that thinking is only half the battle. Hard work when doing it wrong is simply cardio. You can sit in the gym all day doing all the wrong things and nothing will happen to your game except you will be in really good basketball shape. But if you're in there working on situations you will be in, taking advantage of watching your mistakes on film, then working at them, you will move much more efficient, meaning you will save time and wear and tear on your body. Trust me, I know. No one could tell me I wasn't working hard trying to get a pro job. But in hindsight, I understand that I wasn't doing the right things. To my first point, I want to give you this old adage you can live by no matter your life course. Work hard, then work some more. Green kept working after no schools outside of Radford offered him a basketball scholarship at the D1 level. Leaving high school, he had major questions against him. Questions like, what position is he suited for? He's 6'4", but plays like a smaller Amari. So how will he fare against bigger competition? He can't be counted on to consistently knock down shots outside the paint. And outside of running the wing being really athletic, what does he give a team? 
fair questions if you were just looking at him on paper because he was all those things in high school. And I think it was because at the time he was a dual sport athlete that also had football scholarship offers, meaning he wasn't solely focusing on perfecting his basketball game. And just to remind you, this was how he was viewed at the time. With these questions surrounding him, he kept his head down, stayed in the gym, and as we'll see at the end, he got a lot better at most of those things. As a freshman, he came in and was a part of the Big South newcomer team and averaged 10 points, 6 rebounds, and 1.4 steals. He still struggled shooting from deep, from free throw, and wasn't as efficient as he would eventually be. At this point, no one's thinking he's a future NBA player, but you gotta stick with it and understand, if you're putting in the work and you're good enough, someone will find you. Spurt number two, development. One thing I know for sure is that when scouts look at your game, one thing they love to see is a guy's ability to improve over the years. He may not improve in all areas, but enough of the important ones to warrant giving him a shot at least. By his sophomore season, Green led his team from worse in the conference at 2-16 to third in the conference at 7-9 and, and again third in the conference as both a junior and senior with winning overall records. Individually, his numbers drastically improved as a sophomore, now averaging 14.6 points a game, career high in steals, 8 rebounds at 6-4 and now over 50% from the field, all under 30 minutes a game, and good for second team all conference. Now at least the question of what else does he give you can subside a little, now that you see he can get better on the boards, he's very good at playing on ball defense and passing lanes, and he puts in the work to be successful in limited opportunities on the floor. Very impressive, although still no one expected him to be playing a big role for a contending team in the NBA bubble. By his senior season, he was first team all conference, led his team in scoring, rebounding, and steals, actually setting a school record for steals in a season with an improved field goal percentage again. Taking the bad with the good, he still wasn't a very good free throw shooter and more was still desired from his outside shot if he's to play a wing position in today's NBA. By his senior season, he was again first team all conference, the defensive player of the year. His average took a hit but still solid at 15 points a game and an insane 9 rebounds a game and 2 steals. He finished his career as the school's all-time leader in games played, rebounds, steals, and second in scoring. He developed every single season and took advantage of the time he had as an amateur up to that point. Now this still wasn't good enough to have a team take a shot on him in the draft, but a solid springboard to that opportunity down the line. And if he can persevere along with his growth lottery leaping talent, maybe things would work out. They did. Spurt number three, era is everything. Another huge growth spurt for Javante is the era he was able to come up in. My last feature, Hassan Adams, is a lot like Green. Only difference is, Hassan played in the so-called grown man era, where players and the game was a lot tougher and officiated differently. Also, the style is different from Hassan playing in more traditional basketball offenses and not the fast-paced, high-flying, open lanes of today's game. Had Hassan come up in these times, he'd be Javante Green. Luckily for Javante Green, he is Javante Green. Oh, shut up, nigga. And the era is perfect for his skill set. Being undersized, you need work ethic, a high motor, leaping ability, strength, and a two-way mindset where you can be an asset defensively as well. Green is all that. After going undrafted in the 2015 NBA draft, he took his talents overseas where he dominated above the rim and looked like a man amongst boys. He was given the opportunity he'd been looking for in 2019 to join the Boston Celtics in Summer League and showed he could score, pass, defend the ball, play passing lanes, and was a high-motored savage above the rim that took no prisoners. The Celtics wound up signing him to a multi-year contract and he made his debut on October 25, 2019, becoming Radford University's first and only NBA player. 
He's currently doing his thing in the NBA bubble, scoring 23 points in his last game against the Wizards and looking like he belongs on that stage. All in all, this guy is a very inspirational story that should be told more often and on a bigger platform. I'm happy to have been one to tell his story and I also gotta salute Swish Cultures for reminding me about this guy. Now he still has some work to do, for example, he's still not good from the foul line and he's still not a very good 3 point shooter. He does make up for those things in many other areas and I'm excited to see where his growth lottery talent takes him next. Keep doing your thing my man, take it all the way. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth and I'm out.